adventure, sports, outdoors. With host, Harry Canterbury. There I was, back in the wild again And I fell right at home, where I belong I had that feeling, coming over me again Just like it happened so many times before Hi, Harry Canterbury with another edition of Adventure Sports Outdoors. We've got a jam-packed show today. My next-door neighbor, Scott Sternberg, a professional photographer, is going to show us the difference between analog and digital photography. Photography has changed over the years, and uh, he'll show you what's available today for you and me. We're also going to go to Cuba again. I was there in 2000, hosted by the Cuban government. Uh, love Cuba, love the Cuban people. And what Castro has done to those folks is a, is a real sin. Then we're going to go down to Snicarty Slough near Bath, Illinois, and uh, we're going to show you some ducks. It's been some really crazy weather. It's been 60s and 70s, uh, a few ducks here, not all, and we're waiting for the cold weather. And then we're also going to take a look at some photography work that I've done, not professional, but some pictures of some great uh, folks that I know and uh, things that we did this past hunting season. So stay tuned today for a great show. Adventure Sports Outdoors, brought to you in part by Corsaw Lumber, manufacturers of quality hardwood products and buyers of standing timber in Smithfield. Central Pools supply everything from pools to pool tables and much more in Peoria on West Pioneer Parkway. Remax, specializing in commercial and recreational property in Peoria. Michael O'Brien, President. Kaler's Irish Pub and Eatery, located on Peoria's riverfront, open 11 a.m. daily. Alwyn and Sons Meat Company, since 1957, located in Peoria Heights, Illinois. Our thanks to these sponsors. Hello, my name is Scott Sternberg. I'm a professional photographer from Tremont, Illinois. Today I'm going to talk about photography and how I got started. I got started at a very young age. This was my very first camera. I must have been eight years old. I'm not sure whether my mom gave it to me or my grandfather. Um, it, it takes 620 roll film. It was my very first camera. That's, that's how I got started. My grandfather was a professional photographer. Uh, I followed him around. I learned a few things. Uh, I went to high school, took photography classes there, learned something there. Uh, and now I'm, I've moved into the digital photography. With the older cameras, put film on them. They were analog. They had to be take, the film had to be taken out, taken to a developer where they were processed and developed, and you got your pictures back. Today, things are a little different in that we use mostly digital technology. The difference is, is there is no film in our digital cameras. This is my Nikon D800. It uses a digital compact disc card, uh, which, which is where the images are stored. So all your files, all your picture files that you shoot are on that card and now need to be taken to a computer where you can bring them up, look at them, work with them, uh, enhance them if you like, and, uh, and make digital prints. For those of you just getting started in today's digital cameras, there are many different types. There's this little Sony CyberShots. Um, we have e camera phones, do very well taking pictures today. And then we have the digital SLRs. One of the differences between these single lens cameras is these you don't physically look through the camera to see your image. Whereas the digital SLRs, you're actually able to see, just like the old film cameras, by looking through the viewfinder, you can see through the camera exactly what you're shooting at. Um, the other differences are, are the lenses are interchangeable. We have different focal lengths. This particular lens here is a 24 millimeter to 70 millimeter lens. This little larger one is a 70 to 200 millimeter lens. Um, they come in smaller sizes. 
all the way down to 10 millimeters, I believe, would be one of the smaller ones, and all the way up to 600 millimeters and even some 800 millimeter lenses, which are mostly used for wildlife and sports photography. The disadvantage to these little cameras is their zoom length is not quite that long and not really made for wildlife photography, sports photography, where, where these cameras do a lot better than these do. If you're just out and, you, and you're shooting pictures for family and get-togethers, these little cameras are great. Um, where these cameras, the bigger ones shine, uh, sports photography, action sports, it gives you a little more flexibility than the smaller ones do. Both are, are great cameras as long as you use them for their, their intended purpose. Okay, let's talk about megapixels a little bit. This camera, the Sony Cybershot, is a 10 megapixel camera. This camera here, the, the Nikon D300, is a 12 megapixel camera. The new Nikon D800 is a 36 megapixel camera. Megapixels come into play when you want to print your images. If you're going to make standard prints up to 5x7, even in some cases 8x10, a 10 megapixel camera should be plenty. If in my case, the reason I bought the D800, which is the 36 megapixel camera, is for making very large prints. The more megapixels you can put on the, on the, on the sensor, on the frame, the better detail you will get at the larger print sizes. Um, these take, if, if, if you're going to print an 8x10 picture from this camera or this camera, chances are at that size, you're not really going to see any more detail. Again, if you're going to print large, that's why you buy the bigger cameras. And speaking of larger images, um, I have a new website coming out very soon. Uh, the, website would, the website name is Scott's Fine Art. Um, I do a lot of printing at home. These are two current pictures that I'm working on. This is a picture of big, the big red lighthouse in, uh, in Michigan. These types of pictures like this you will not get out of the smaller single shot or, or, or single lens cameras. This is another photograph also taken in Michigan. Something I'm currently printing for somebody else. This is the Grand Haven Lighthouse. So the advantages to me of the bigger cameras are the bigger prints. Since this is an outdoor show, we're going to show you some of my older work when I was doing a lot of uh, nature photography, mostly eagles, that were taken up in Iowa. My suggestion, if you would like to get into photography today, would be go, to, to go online and just type in digital photography and search. There are tons and tons of sites with all kinds of information on different types of photography. Um, you probably need to decide what type of photography you'd like, and there are even classes you can take at your local colleges. Once again, my name is Scott Sternberg. My uh, current website is scottsfineart.com. If you have any questions, drop me a line. I'd be happy to speak with you, answer any questions you may have. And all my digital work is available at that website.
In the year 2000, five of us took off and went to Havana, Cuba. We were hosted by the Cuban government. Not everybody can go to Cuba. Some people do. They go from uh, the United States and they fly to uh, Mexico or they go to the Bahamas and uh, they fly into Havana. It is illegal and if you're caught, you will be fined severely. My father-in-law, who has passed away two years after this uh, video was made, thoroughly enjoyed the trip, had never been out of the country before in his life, and going to a communist country was uh, quite an experience. These uh, folks down there, the only thing that they own is the shirt on their back. They're very industrious people, they work hard, they love music, and uh, they have the same desires, needs, and wants as we do, but they're not able to pursue them because of communism. Uh, probably back in the 1600s, 16, 1600s or 1500s. Yeah. How old do you think that cathedral is downtown? That sucker's got a, a couple of, it was on his second voyage, I think, to get Cuba. I think, I don't, I don't He made, what, four voyages to the United States? Four, go ahead. Or, not to the United America. States, to the New World. Bill Sheets, who uh, has been to Cuba many times, this was his fifth trip, and uh, Bill uh, loves Cuba uh, as much as any man could. It's a beautiful, beautiful country, and like I said, beautiful people. Uh, he went there deliberately to try to find a way to sneak out some folks that he has been trying to help for a long time. Um, we stayed at their home. Uh, they shared their dinner with us, and uh, they did get out about five years later, legally. But uh, Bill was there to try to help them uh, figure out how to get out of Cuba and come to the United States.
Waterbury is a hell of a cook. Castro ever decides to let it go, uh, that will be a very, very booming economy down there. And those people will probably come out being the wealthiest per person country in the third world countries that we know today, simply because they out hustle most everyone else. I never found a lazy Cuban, did you? I didn't see no. one. There's no such a thing as a thing as a lazy Cuban. Yeah, I don't think so. Well, anyway, just to wrap this up, we had a great time and a great trip, and I had a whole lot of fun. This is one adventure that uh, I wish all of you could come and, and uh, go on because it definitely was something to uh, to see. But uh, just like we've been to Canada, we've been to Alaska, we've been to Florida, we've been all over the United States, we've been to England, now we've been to Cuba, and we had one great adventure, and we got to see a lot of great things. Mm. So uh, hopefully uh, we can go do some other things someplace else and have just as much fun. Hi, I'm Dave Barth with your shooting tip of the week. Today we're going to talk about the upcoming deer season and the use of handguns to make your hunt a little more challenging. Your minimum barrel length in a handgun is a 4 inch. Some of the caliber selection that you can make would be a 357 Magnum, a 44 Magnum, a 454 Casul, or an exotic cartridge like a 4570 in a handgun. One of the pistols that is legal to hunt with would be a Thompson Center Contender. A Smith 44 Magnum. This is a 460 and a Magnum Research 4570 revolver. You can even use something as exotic as a Uberti manufactured lever action pistol and 45 long Colt. Hi, I'm Dave Barth with your shooting tip of the week. Teddy, get over here. I didn't bring my camera. Maybe they'll come back. You think? They might come back. A lot of mallards out there, Harry. <laughs> yeah, I know there are. A lot of mallards. Lots. Two groups of about 500, yeah. I guess. I've been hunting duck since I was uh, 12 years old, and it's always fun uh, going duck hunting. Just uh, being in the outdoors and uh, watching the uh, ducks fly around. It's really nice to shoot them occasionally, but uh, this particular day, um, they were all ganged up out in the middle of the lake. You got your phone with you? Yeah. Yeah, I do. All right, Teddy, let's go. Come on, we're going somewhere else. Teddy, come on. All right, good luck, guys. Thank you. We'll shoot till about 10 o'clock, right? Yeah. Teddy, come here. Uh, really couldn't get a shot till later that afternoon, and we uh, we did kill five uh, that afternoon. But uh, the the really great thing about uh, going hunting uh, on that day was just seeing thousands and thousands and thousands of ducks and geese on their migratory path to the south. The mallards sure like the feed you put in here. It's all natural. Yeah, you put. No, this is all natural oh, this here. Is all natural. Yeah, it's, it's a nut grass. You didn't put it in here. No, no, it's just full. No, see, that's that nut grass that's down here on the ground. If you look at that stuff right there, that's what those ducks like is that nut grass right there. They're just crazy about it. Do they like that? Oh, they love it. Well, you can see that's why they're out there. Well, what uh, did you pump this, Harry? No, this is all uh, water that's come in from the river and also out of all the lakes around. Wow, it's about six are. inches of water out there. I'll be darned. Something, huh? Oh, I can't wait to get out there and well, we're gonna do her. these birds. We're going to do her right now. Just listen to them. I can't hear anything. Well, let's go do her.
What do you think, Teddy? A lot of ducks, huh? You want me to shoot one, don't you? I know you do. They're too far, Teddy Bear. They're too far. Do you want to go get some ducks? Do you like getting ducks? You like ducks, don't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Teddy Bear does. Yeah, he's a teddy bear and he likes to go duck hunting. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he loves to go duck hunting. Yeah. <laughs> Sit down. Sit down. There, it's a good boy. Stay there. Oh, yeah. I would say probably out in front of me was at least... Uh, a thousand to fifteen hundred ducks, mostly mallards. Well, at least we got ducks, but we can't shoot them. <laughs> yeah. Sure is pretty out here, though. Red Nose Gang is back on WOAM Radio, 1350 AM, every Sunday from 7 to 10. If you like the outdoors, you'll like our show. Adventure Sports Outdoors, brought to you in part by Corsaw Lumber, manufacturers of quality hardwood products and buyers of standing timber in Smithfield. Rawlings Trailer Sales, supplying sportsmen with all their trailer needs just south of Hopedale. Remax, specializing in commercial and recreational property in Peoria. Michael O'Brien, President. Kaler's Irish Pub and Eatery, located on Peoria's riverfront, open 11 a.m. daily. Alwyn and Sons Meat Company, since 1957, located in Peoria Heights, Illinois. Our thanks to these sponsors. Thank you. 